Hey, Heather, how's it going? Hi, Dr. Riley. Hello. You made your college decision? I have not. Okay. I forget. I forget whether I told you or not, but I'm deciding between University of Maryland and Lehigh University. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. You got things now. Now, Dan, what's your major going to be? Um, I got into both of the business schools, so oh, nice. something with business, most likely like management, HR track. Uh huh. Maybe like minor in entrepreneurship. We'll oh, see. There you go. Maryland has yeah. a good program in that. Hmm? I know Maryland has a good program in that. Yeah, they're both yeah. really solid. Back in the day, one of my daughters uh, dated a guy from Maryland in the entrepreneurial program, and his his big thing was he was renting refrigerators to students. That was his entrepreneurial. And it was before, like, uh, massive refrigerators really started happening. It was quite a while ago. So mm -hmm. he was in a <coughs> – I want to say she was in high school, maybe. He was a freshman there or something, but anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it yeah. was it was pretty cool. pretty cool. Yeah, I like both a lot, but I'm really torn because they're so different. But there are aspects of both that I like a lot, and it's like UMD is the safer option. Lehigh is more of like a risk, maybe. So just trying to figure out what I want to do. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting decisions all all around. Yeah. It's stressful, but... it's, it's stressful, but you know, it's not an end of the world decision. You can always make other decisions. Um, yeah. My daughter Kelly's class, for some reason, those those kids were just so focused on if they didn't make the right decision, their life was over. And uh, that was the only class that really had that. But it was pretty intense. And she was deciding between hospitality and nursing. So she had like two huge things. And she had schools for each and she went nursing, which was an excellent decision for her. Because that was a very good fit. But yeah, it's a, it's tough. It's really tough. This is the first really adult thing you're doing. Uh, and has far reaching ramifications, but things also change. So and that's okay too. Let's just do this. Um, Dr. Riley, just so you know, I have an early release at 215 because we have a game today. So. Okay, Miles. That sounds good. I'm happy you have a game. And the weather's supposed to be good today, right? Yeah, it's really nice outside. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just looking at that. That was very good. I'm going to try bike riding today. We're going to see what's going to happen there. That's going to be very humbling, is my thought. But it's OK. Let me save this, and then I'll get into our class. So what I did for us, let me just admit, Olivia, is I found another mock review that we could do so that um, we can go over this concept some more. So let me get out of here. Let me start putting on our attendance. Okay. Anything going here? All right, let me put this in. Class attendance. All right, so let's see how, how we're doing here. Um, do we have Trace? Trace, are you out there somewhere? Okay, I don't see Trace. But I know I have Miles. I don't have Ben. So I don't have Trace. Let me get I'm here. Uh, oh, thank I'm you. Here. Yeah, why don't you guys just yell at me? Because it's hard for me to look back up and down here. Um, so I have Ben, so he's on Zoom, but I don't have Trace. Do I have Sheldon? I see Sheldon. And, okay, is Victor out there? Yes, Victor's right there. Up oh, here's Trace. Get him back in. Okay, so then... Oh, Katie's back. Katie, how are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay, too. I'm okay. We're just going to just pace ourselves, okay? That's going to be the key. Okay, do I have um, Sophia? Yes, I, yes, I do. Right there, right in front. 
Okay, and I have Gavin, I saw him. I saw Jonathan. I have Olivia. I have Wyatt. Um, I have David. I have, <coughs> do I have Jordan? I'm not seeing Jordan yet. Uh, Dr. Riley? Yes, sweetheart. I have a quick question. So for this class, would you be able to also upload this class since this is the review class? I'm um, sure I can do that. Thank you. So let me, I'll finish taking attendance and then I'll hit record. Yeah, the other one was so bad. Like I, I hard to look at some of that, but it was okay. The information I think is good. Okay, so and then I have Maisie, which is good. Okay, so the only person I said that I am missing right now is I believe Jordan. So we'll see if Jordan comes in. So let me apply that and we're good. Okay, so let me just get out the calculus. And um, we're gonna do this mock quiz. But before we do that, I'm gonna see if you have any questions on what was done yes, uh, last class. So what do you think about the blue review packet now that we've done a couple more of those? Is that okay? All right, let me make, let me make sure I have this uh, Google Classroom um, going live. So let me just uh, go into your class. Let's see this one. Okay, so I had a draft up. I just want to see if I made it into an assignment. Um, and I did. Okay, so the mock quiz is what I posted. So you can download that mock quiz. And I'll tell you how, what's the most effective way to do it um, in just a second. Let me just turn on the record. Okay, so it's recording. Okay, so um, what I see is, uh, I'll show you what I see. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so you should be able to see this. So I have all the formulas up top. Um, here's a, another opportunity to practice a ladder, a ladder problem with an area underneath it. Then you have a sphere, and we're going to notice the key on the word escaping. That means that that is going to be decreasing. Then we have a cube. Then we have a um, conical pile. And then you have a ladder leaning against the building. But this time it's an it's a radian um, and seconds problem. It's a change of angle problem. So instead of using like a rocket type thing, I'm using a ladder against the wall, and we're looking at the exact same angle. Okay. So I think what I would like to do is do this as five problems. I would say let's do like the first two. We'll do them in breakout rooms. I'll stop you. You'll come back. The most effective way for you to do this is you can definitely talk to other people and I want you to be able to do that. Uh, but also think about what you're not sure of because whatever you're not sure of, that's what you want to study. So that's how you want to um, do a mock quiz. You want to do it so that you are figuring out what it is you still need to go over. Um, I believe the answers are at the very end, they are. So if you're not getting that, that's your reinforcement. Something is wrong. So star those. But let's just do a couple at a time and I'll keep bringing you back, okay? How does that sound? Is that okay? okay yeah. everyone's, no one's in the room with me, so it's hard to get feedback. Let me set up the breakout rooms. Okay, so let me see. I'm just gonna do them randomly. So I think I have three per room. I'm not sure if that includes me. And hopefully Jordan will come in at some point. Um, so let me just see if that three per room means me as well. No, it does not. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so you have three per room. I'm gonna invite you in now or in just a second. Yeah, and then this is up for 10 minutes. So let's see where we get in 10 minutes, okay? 
No, actually it's gonna close sooner. <laughs> okay, so maybe I may have to do this again. So hold on, let me do this again. Because that did not create itself correctly. All right, well, the, the breakout room is gonna close in a second and I can't do anything about it right now. Wait, Dr. Riley, mm -hmm. are we gonna have those um, equations like on the test that are on the top of this mock quiz? Yes, what I'm gonna do, Victor, since I scaled down the quiz so that you can see it all on one page, I put the actual equation that you're gonna use right next to the problem. Okay, cool. You don't have Thank to you. flip back or anything like that. Okay, so I have to set up these breakout rooms again, but I'll do that in, in 14 seconds. So bear with me. Okay, so let me try this again. Option. I wanted to set the time. So let's set it for 12 minutes. Uh, no, I'll set it for 10 minutes and we'll see where we are. Okay, so all rooms now will open and actually will be open for 10 minutes. So go ahead and you can pick your, go into your room. Hey, Katie, you still here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna, I, I was hoping you listened to the video because in the video I said what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take the, the test, but using paper. So since it's a school day, those people that are in school will just be using paper to do it. And the ones that are at home will put themselves on their camera and I'll mm -hmm. broadcast the test. Okay, because I had only asked because um, I'm not in person that day, so. Okay, yeah, that's how I'm going to do it for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. I made it so that I put it all on one page, so you should be able to see everything, and I put the formula exactly next to the problem, so there's no, like, question as to what formula you can use, you have to use, and there's no flipping around then, so I think is that's. Is it, right. like, is there only one form for everyone? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, so you're just going to put it on the screen. Yes, exactly. Okay. They wanted us to try this new method, so I'm gonna I'm giving it a shot. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, honey. Hey, Dr. Riley. Yes, Trace. Um, so right now I'm like strapped in to the ice machine on my bed, yes. so I won't be able to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm like kind of bedridden for another week. Okay. Um, you and I do, think and on doctor, Monday. What are you gonna do Monday? I think on Monday I have, I have a post op appointment uh Friday, but I think I have, um another like check-in with the post-op and the, and the meeting with the physical therapist and the surgeon and stuff i have that on monday okay so just give so like, me a time that you think is good and i have another version that i can uh we can do the same thing for you okay so just you pick a time that works for you when you know your medicine levels are good so that you're you can be clear with it and that your pain level is good so don't do it right after pt because you might be uncomfortable you know Mm hmm. So, yeah. So what would we do for that? Would I just then just uh, you'd send it to me on Google Classroom and then I would turn it in thing? I think that what I would do is just you give me a time and then I would do the same thing with you. I would just post it and you can do it the same as the rest of the class. OK, Yeah, because also um, we can do that. I still might be able to do it Monday because my mom, I have the whole she has the schedules, but I was just thinking off the top of my head. Yeah. But um, I'll. Like, I, I'm not going to be able to, like, I, I don't, uh, like, fit at the desk, so oh, I'll be no, trying to do it on a. Yeah. Trace, just do it. We're going to just do it so that you can do it. So between now and then, think about how you can best work, and that's what we're going to do, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. Can I do, how do I go back to the other? I think you can hop in.
Dr. Riley. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how to do it, but I was wondering if I could just like sort of watch, like you're going to go over it after, right? Or at least some of the problems, correct? Yeah. So who are you with in your group? Miles and Heather. Oh yeah. Listen to what they're saying. And write it yeah. Down. So that's what I planned on doing. And then also like when we come out of it, like I was going to listen to you. And then also I think Mr. Hoag's going to tutor yeah. me on the side. Yeah. I talked to him last night. So yes. Cause he, he said he taught you algebra too, right? Yeah. And yeah. that was, that was a pretty good class. Pre-calc was a little hard for me, but algebra too, I did understand. So I can, I can sort of work with him on the, um, the pre-calc, you know? Oh yeah. Because I like you to be able to take the, the test on Monday. So at least get yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a time with him as soon as possible. Cause tomorrow. I think he's going to call you and tell, tell you, he just called me a little while ago, and one of his um, people he usually tutors canceled today for four o'clock. So I know he has four o'clock open. I think, I think I have a doctor's appointment after school, but as soon as I come home, I can work with him. I'm not entirely sure what time that is. I guess I'll shoot him an email later, be like, "Hey, I heard you had." Mom is going to contact him. Yeah, I'll talk <laughs> to her. So. Me during last class, said that uh, he just had a, con a cancellation. Gotcha um yeah i'll have her get in contact with him so yeah, i know i know she already sent him one email and he was going to write mm -hmm. that to her so I yeah think he did that probably just like a very few minutes ago as long as the gotcha. class was not starting gotcha okay yeah so i think that gotcha. i'm happy that you had him before and um and he's you know he teaches the same thing i do yeah. so i think that's that'll be a much better match than c2 which i think would be such an unknown it would yeah, I mean, I used to, when I was like younger in elementary, or not elementary school, but middle school, I went to Mathnasium and only, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're still there. I don't know what the deal with that is. That stuff kind of helped me a lot with the earlier math and stuff. Right. But, the thing is, I, I just don't know to the extent that they know yeah, the this program. I understand. But I didn't want anything to get messed up. Gotcha. So anyway, so hopefully this will work out and that you guys can figure out a good time that you can get together and work for a little bit. Yeah. So come in and, can, and be honest with him because you already know him. He already you know, knows you. We just say, listen, I have no idea about this. I have a sense about this. Help yeah. Um, I'm trying to do like probably multiple times a week with him because I know for work wise, I have like, I, I know on what is it? whatever day this is, whether it's even or odd, I know I have two periods free, essentially, if I'm not in school, I at least have the third period of the day, which is study hall. So I think he's not going to be able to work with you during the school day, just for con yeah. contract reasons. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I also posted the video of our last class. Is so that on Google Classroom? Yeah, it's on the date oh, that okay. we had the class. And David just asked me if I can post this one. So I will do that. Yeah. Later. Okay. Yeah, I know work-wise, I usually have Mondays, and I have Wednesdays off for sure, and Mondays, sometimes I get Thursday and Sundays off, but Friday, Saturday, I'm usually, and Tuesday, I'm usually always working, so if I can figure out a time with him on those days, that would be pretty fantastic. Yeah, no, I would think so. So they're just about ready to come back, so gotcha. we'll go over the first two, so make sure you get some things down so that you have stuff to talk about with Mr. Um, Hogue, okay? Okay, sounds good. Sounds good, thank you, honey. Mm, no problem. So I think most of you are back. I'm just looking for Gavin, Katie, and Ben, and Sophia. They'll come back in 20 seconds.
then what we'll do is we'll maybe we'll go around the groups and see if we can get some information down and make sure we're understanding how to do this. Okay, so they'll come right now. There we go. Okay, so let me um, just share my screen and I'm gonna have you guys talk because I think it's probably easier if I have my screen up for you though. Okay, so how are the first two going? <clears throat> for those that have been here and been working with us. So um, let's see, David's room. So um, David, Gavin, Trace. Tell me, um, David and Gavin, mainly, how, how are you doing with this? I'm good. I got it. Okay. And David, where are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty okay. I still have issues with uh, specifically this problem and just cones. Okay. So, the, okay. So the big thing with this problem is draw your triangle, definitely. Um, I use Pythagorean theorem twice. You usually will have to do that. We have a missing, a missing side, right? So this side was missing. So I just used a quick Pythagorean theorem, 32 squared equals X squared plus Y squared, plugged in the 12 they just gave me and solve for Y squared and I end up getting y equals 29.7. So I just ran it to the nearest tenth because they told me to do that here. So just watch this, okay? So I have that, that measurement now, which is also in feet. So then set up your equation. So David, <coughs> what was your initial equation for the related rates? What did you write? So you can, uh, turn it over to Gavin if you want. Gavin, what did you write for your initial equation? I had, um, well, I had x squared plus y squared equals c squared, but then I um, I did 12 squared plus y squared equals 32 squared, and I got 29.673. Yeah, I mean for the related rates equation. Oh, sorry. I had 2x times dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt equals zero. Okay, so hopefully you had this first, right, before you took the related rates. And then don't forget everyone that's listening, uh, make sure that you just recognize that that constant is going to go to zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. So then we would have this y dt, dx dt, sorry, go back. dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Okay, so I have that set up. So then let me go down to the next room. So Ben, Waze, uh, Maisie, and Jonathan, um, once you're at this point, what am I gonna start just doing? So Ben, what will I do when I get down to this? Um, get the derivative. Yeah, I just took the derivative, so I'm over here. Yeah. So can we start plugging in? Yes. So I have my two, my x is my 12, my dx dt is positive, which is a little bit different because all the other problems we've done has had a negative dy dt. So the x is positive because as, as the base, as the ladder sliding along the floor, the x segment's getting bigger. That makes it positive. So that dx dt is positive. If that's positive, then what sign will my dy dt be? Negative. Exactly. Okay, so I'm plugging all these guys in. I'm looking for this. I'm gonna leave it to you guys to move um, all that other stuff over. I think it's gonna be a negative 60 then over um, 59.4, something like that. And that's gonna give me negative 1.0 roughly uh, feet per minute for my dy dt. Does that seem reasonable? Okay, so then down to um, Katie, Olivia, and Victor's room. When they ask you about the area of the triangle formed by the ladder and the tree and how it's changing when the base of the ladder is 12 feet, how do you know that you can use the same information from above? Because they gave you the same measurements. Right, they gave you this 12, and that 12 is going to make 
this is a 29.7, and they just want to know how it's changing, and you already have calculated how it moves up and down. For the area, you don't need to worry about where you're stopping. You're not really stopping. You're sliding up and down, and um, you're, you are at the, the values they gave you. So it's, it's not quite the dynamic situation that you've got going on, although I guess it is, because it's the area. But my point is, there is no need to recalculate anything. So everything that you've used is going to be usable down here. So just make sure that you had your signs correct. And for these problems, you will forever and ever have opposite signs. Okay, so once I have that, what am I going to use for my formula? So Katie, and Olivia, Victor, what am I going to use for my formula? I want area. Dr. Riley, real quick, I have to head out. Okay, go ahead, honey. Okay, thank you. Have a good You're welcome. Um, DA over DT equals one half X DY over DT plus one half Y DX over DT. Right, exactly. So you're going to take the product rule, and when you have your product rule, you have an X mix, mixed with a DY DT. Don't let that throw you because you're doing a product and not an addition. In additions, you don't have the mixture of the Y's and the X's and the DX DT with the Y, but you do here. So just you know, make sure you do this okay. So when you plug in all the numbers that they gave you, what did you get? Match me in the back. It should be a positive. So uh, Victor, what did you get for that? Victor. Um. I don't know. Okay. So I think I got a 31.1 and because it's area, it's feet squared per minute. Okay, so that's how we work that. Do so you want to know how to do the ladder and the area? Okay, that brings us to the helium. So let's go over to Mason, um, Sheldon, and Sophia. So what are important takeaways from this problem. Um, one thing that we know for certain is we're going to use volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. So there's no switching out. So what are your takeaways? What did you put down for your units that you're going to be working with? Um, the one unit is decreasing, so it's a negative. So negative one half inch per second. Good. So that's, oops, sorry, that is going to be the rate back up here. Okay, so I'm going to call that DRDT, right? <laughs> My gosh, I keep hitting this little thing. Okay, so DRDT will be, and it's going to be, what you keyed on is this, right? The fact that it's decreasing. Because notice I don't have any negatives in here, so they're going to be implied by you. So DRDT is going to be negative one half inch per second. Okay, that's going to be important to, to understand that you're going to have to think about the wording and how does that impact the sign of your information. Find the rate of change of the volume with respect to time at the instant the radius is 24 inches. Okay, so that's what I, that's my information I've gathered. Uh, they are looking for DVDT. Okay, so um, down to um, up to Mason. Mason, so what am I going to do? What's my derivative going to be? You need to do the chain rule. So yes. I did dvdt <laughs> equals I split like four thirds pi is like left and then r cubed as right. And so right. you do four thirds pi times three r squared dr dt plus yes. r cubed. Plus r cubed? Yeah. How did you get plus r cubed? Because it wanted to do lefty right plus righty left. But you only have one variable. You are correct. Did you view the pi as another variable? Yeah, for a second I did. Oh, that's interesting. Because you have not done that in a long time. No. That's a great mistake to make right now. Because we haven't um, talked about that. So yeah, remember the pi is just a constant. It's going to come along for the road. So you, you don't do the product rule. This is going to be totally the power rule. And then, um, and then you have no chain rule. So just do the power rule. And God is good. So those threes cancel. And you're left without a fraction to deal with. 
So that's good. So Mason, it should look more like what I have here. Yeah. Okay, that, that was good. Okay, so then I, I'm looking for DVDT, so I can't plug in for that. Here comes the far, four, here comes the pi. My R was 24, don't forget to square it. That's another problem with just trying to go too quickly at this point. And my DR, DT is gonna be negative one half. A lot of times it's better to put it in parentheses so you don't think you're subtracting. So this two can cancel here. And when I multiply things out, I'm, I should be getting, it has to be a negative. I got one, one, five, two pi. Now I'm in inches cubed, which makes sense because it's a volume measurement. And because it's a related rates, I have to also add in the time element. All right. Okay, so David, how are you on that? And we're going to hop around and see how people are doing. So David, keep listening. Keep your your uh, mic up and aware. Okay, um, Wyatt, what do, you, what do you think about this? So I'm going to call on you guys, so you have to kind of stay with me. Otherwise, it gets very boring not having people answer. Okay, so who else is, ha is having some concerns? We never got Jordan in. Wait a second, for that problem, you did two times pi times 24 squared times negative one. Yes. So I'm not getting the same answer. Oh, wait, <laughs> I'm done. I included pi. Pi, yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, so I'm going to have you leave all your answers in pi. Okay, so Ben, how is this one for you? Then say that, something. So that, that made sense. That one makes okay. sense. Okay, because there's a, there's several pitfalls. The fact that you have to have a negative is a pitfall. If it doesn't, if it's not negative, you're going to end up having an increasing volume, and that's going to not be consistent with the nature of the problem. The other thing is you want to make sure you take that derivative correctly, and you leave pi in your answer, and that you uh, always view pi as a constant and not a variable. Okay, yeah. so all that's important. Katie, yeah. how are you feeling about this? Katie? David? Um, I'm kind of confused about this question, Dr. Okay. Lowe. Ask me something that I can clarify. I'm just like kind of like a little rusty because I didn't, I wasn't in class. Right, last... oh, I, know. I know. Yeah. yeah. That's why I called you because I want to make sure that, that I'm touching base with you. And I'll have this video up also. But so okay, thank you. Are, you're going to have the formula right in front of you. So there's no decision to be made there. So then your focus should be on reading the problem, looking for words like decreasing, increasing, melting. You know, those kind of words give you signs like negatives or positives. And that's going to be important. And then it's kind of just plug and chug once you get rolling with the problem. But it is important to probably read it a couple of times so that you're picking up all the nuances and then, um, then you'll be good. Let me just check my chat. Okay, no problem, Sophia. Okay, so let me let me go for the next one. Let's do this again. Let me stop sharing for a sec. We've got two problems down. Okay, so I'd like to do this breakout room situation, but I also want to be able to call on you. So, you know. Listen to your name. Sometimes you get working and you're not listening, and I totally understand that. But it's better to have a class discussion, and it helps me to know where you're struggling so I can kind of facilitate a move in the right direction before the quiz, okay? So that's my intention. Okay, so we have uh, the ice cube one that's next, and then we have a cone. So why don't we just quickly do the ice cube one? I'll give you like five minutes to do that. And, um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we have to do with a cone and then we'll do a cone. Okay, so let me just um, do this again. And I'm going to just put it in for five minutes. So five minutes, you should have be able to have an answer with that. So ask your classmates if you're struggling. Okay, so I'm gonna open all the rooms. Okay, so go ahead, work on just the ice cube.
Sophia, how are you on the on the cones? Um, I'm doing okay on the cones. I'm understanding it more now that we went over it a couple of classes ago, but I'm rusty again after a break. So I need to keep reviewing. Okay, so we may not get to that before you have to go. So know that I'm gonna post, post this video so there'll be a discussion about it. Okay, I'll watch the videos for sure. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. So hop in with your fellows for a second or two. Okay, so I'm starting to get people back. Things are good. <clears throat> so I think I just need Gavin's room. And I need Jonathan, Heather, and Ben.
Okay, so they should be here in about nine seconds. Okay, so we made it through all the all the five rooms last time. So let's go back up. So David, how is this problem coming to you? The cube. David. Hi. Hello. Hello, honey bun. So how is how are you able to handle the, the cube? Uh, one second. I just my dad was talking to me, so I kind of lost my my train of thought. One second. <laughs> okay, so we want to work on three A. How fast is the length of the sides increasing? So that's going to be positive or negative, David, if it's increasing. Positive. Good. And they told me above that it's expanding. So if it's ex expanding, then that change in volume is also positive, right? Yes. Okay. So you see what you see? Oh, you can't see anything. Hold on. Let me just show <laughs> it. And it's not going to share. Maybe it will do it now. Okay, so it's going to share in a sec. So we have the information. It's pretty minimal. I think you all can handle these cubes well, but you might as well get every single point we can. Okay, so that's my initial equation. So take the derivative, Dave. David. The derivative of that. So it's dvdt equals Power three over. s squared Good. ds dt. Good. Okay, so that's that's what you needed and you have to another problem I see people have is not knowing what they gave you and what they want. Look at the units that one centimeter cubed cubed is volume. So that's why the one's going to go here. Okay, that's those are easy mistakes to make is just putting it in the wrong spot. It's not always that you're solving um, for something missing on the right side. Sometimes it's on the left side. So then plug in what they gave you. This is three squared. Um, and how fast is the length of the sides increasing at the instant? So I'm looking for this, ds dt. So you end up bringing everything over and I'm getting one over 27. It's just a side. So therefore it's gonna just be centimeters per second. Okay, so watch your units that you deliver back to me as well. Okay, anybody have any worries about the cube? Because that should be very straightforward. So then surface area, I forget truthfully if I asked you about surface area, why don't I just look so I can alleviate any fears? I don't think we had done that. Nope, nope, I didn't ask you any surface areas on this. There were some surface areas questions on the pink packet, but I did not ask you surface area on the quiz. Okay, so, but we can still do it because it's always good to do. How fast is the surface area changing at the instant the side length is three? So let's see what we're gonna do for that. So I have that set up. Um, go ahead and let's take my derivative there. So Sheldon, you wanna help us take the derivative? We'll go over to your room. So I need to know how fast the surface area is changing. Here's a surface area equation. Because the length yes. are the same side, I can use all the information from the previous problem. So go ahead, Sheldon, what, you, what are you getting? Yeah, so for the, the uh, derivative, I got D um, S A over D T equals 12 X um, times D X over D T. Okay, good. Okay, and then they are looking for this. They want to know this. They gave us that. And you're going to then use the DSTT from the previous problem, which is one over 27. So make sure that you get that. This is going to be three right here. Okay, that's the other key thing with this problem is that you are going to double dip on the information that you first solved for in uh, part A. So when you have all of these things together, you should be getting a DS, uh, excuse me, DSADT is going to be um, 36 over 27, which I think is going to be reduced. And because it's area, it's centimeters squared. 
for a second, and then we can reduce that to four thirds. Okay, so you won't need to know that kind, that, that um, style, but um, I think you can easily do it. And that is gonna be always a square there. Okay, so this brings us to the most problematic ones that we have are the cones. <coughs> so- Go back up real quick, sorry. Oh yeah, 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 sorry. Thank you. Okay, so tell me what kinds of things you have to think about with cones, because there's many things playing in the background. So let's do that first, and I'm going to send you off to do it, and then we'll come back and see how we did. So, um, Maisie, what do you have to think about with cones? And I'll write the formula down just to trigger some discussion. So it's going to be volume equals one third pi r squared times height. So what are your thoughts about cones, cones concerns? Yeah, um, wait, were you asking me? I was. Okay. Um. So, like, usually, well, I don't know if it's for all cone problems, but like, usually we have to substitute out one of the variables so that because there's two variables. Right, and it will it will be for all cones because okay. it won't give you information on everything you need. So therefore, you have to establish the relationship. So Maze is exactly right. When you read this, you're going to figure out whether it's going to be switching out the R or switching out the H. Okay, so if the other thing is the salt's being poured out, which sounds like it's negative, but it's being poured out onto the floor, which is making a cone grow bigger. So that's actually positive. So be careful with the rate, with the reading of the problem. So, and the rate is three cubic inches per second. That rate is positive. If I was asking you about the rate of the salt leaving the shaker, that would be negative, but we're not. Okay, the other thing you need to, you need to remember is that sometimes they'll give you information in terms of diameter. That's helpful, but not in that form. This is not um, a diameter um, type formula. It's a radius type formula. So you always have to switch that. So be aware of that. Always be aware of whether you have um, a unit conflicts you don't have any here, but you should definitely always look at that. Okay, so we have a formula. You know what you're gonna be at the lookout for. You know it's a positive chain, so everything's gonna be positive, everything's growing. So go ahead and take another few minutes to get that resolved. So I'm gonna open the rooms again and, um, and you can hop on in. I think it's probably gonna be a 10 minute type thing. Uh, Dr. Riley? Yes. I've been working a little bit ahead. Um, I'm on number five right now. Uh, yep. I was wondering if I could get a little bit of help with that one. Yep. Yep. So um, you set it up as a sine, tan, or a cosine. Uh, well, actually, I, um, I I didn't realize what we were finding until it was almost too late. I kind of um, started a little bit out. So I found both of the sides, um, actually, and that's what I solved for. And then I just solved for dy, dt, which I realized I probably didn't need to do. I overcomplicated a little bit. So I would say so. Okay, so let's look at that. So this is, let me share my screen again. Because I too was setting it up ahead. Okay, so that's what I drew. So you shouldn't be solving for a lot of things because these are special triangles, right? Mm-hmm. So did you make sure that you put your um, 30 degrees at the top? So it's not the toe angle this time, it's the top angle. Oh, that's what, yeah, I didn't do that. That's actually, yeah. Yeah, because it says, because um, when I did that, I thought, oh yeah, right, I mentioned that. Uh, find the rate at which the angle between the top of the ladder and the wall is changing when the angle is 30. So okay. I gave you the 40, right, for the ladder. <coughs> so that's your 2A side. Remember, remember back in the day of special triangles? Yeah. That's a side. This is an A side, and this is an A root three side. Okay. So I I just use that to get all my missing sides. Okay, so that'll be twenty root three. Okay. Okay. Then I said, okay, thirty is the same as pi over six. That's the smallest angle. So now I have all my angles. 
So from, so what do I have information on? Let's see. The bottom of the ladder is sliding away from the building horizontally at a rate of six feet per second. So this is DFCT equals six feet per second. Find the rate at which the angle between the top of the ladder is changing when the angle is 30 degrees. Okay, so I believe what I'm going to do is I am going to play around with sine. I did opposite of a hypotenuse. Oh, yeah, because I knew that that 40 never changes. I can't use tan here because I don't have information about how how the y is changing. Uh -huh. so I can't use it. So I'm going to go for where I can use a constant. That's going to be my determination. So I can so use a constant. Go ahead. That would be cosine, right? No, because remember, you're doing it from this, uh, this perspective up here. So you have information about dx dt. Oh, oh, yeah, because it's from the 30 angle. Yeah, I'm still right. looking at the 60 angle. Sorry. Right, exactly. So this is going to be sine of pi over 6 equals x over 40. And then that's the initial angle, but I really want to know what it is for the angle at any time, you know, I'm just going to plug that in at the very end. Okay. So take your derivative and you're going to get cosine theta d theta dt equals one over 40 dx dt. Dx dt. Okay. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing. We want to get d beta dt by itself. We can plug in a 6 for um, the dx dt. So we'll clean this up a little bit. So this is d beta dt equals 1 over 40. And then that's going to be a 6. And then now it's going to be divided by the cosine of the angle. Okay. Value. Yeah, okay, I see that. Okay, so the cosine of the angle at the instant, and really now this is going to be the cosine at the instant of the change, or when it stops changing. So that's going to be cosine of 30, right? So what is the, um, the value of the cosine of 30? So remember I that you have your unit circle, and the very first pair are one half root three over two and cosine mm -hmm. first. So that cosine value is gonna be root three over two, right? Yeah. So that you can write it as two over root three for our purposes here, right? This is gonna yeah. be six over 40 and then two over root three. Wasn't it, isn't it root three over two? It is. No, it could be. But it's in the denominator. Remember we had a divide? Oh, okay. Yeah. I know there's a lot of places you can go wrong on this. So, so you I'm, just flipped it. You just flipped it to get it to the numerator. Right. Now, now I, I, now I don't have any double deck of fractions. So two can go into this 20 times and this is going to be um, three and 10. So I think I have three over 10 root three. Yep. That's on the answer key. Okay, good. Yep. And then if you put it in your calculator as a decimal, it's going to be 0.17. Okay. Yep. So yeah, that's it's definitely, a, that's definitely complex. <laughs> yeah. So this is a little bit more complicated. Know, know that for the quiz, I'm going to use the rocket problem, but I wanted you to kind of think about it in another way because I think that's going to help us. Um, the rock is what we did in the last packet, right? Where it's, um, you're just solving for the angle rather than given the angle. Right. Right. This one I wanted to kind of capitalize on the unit circle. Okay. I gave you the angle. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure once, yeah, I mean, that definitely helped a little bit. So I'll review that, but awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Riley. You're welcome. So I'm going to go, I'm going to stop sharing. I think everyone's back. We'll go over the other one now. Okay. So um, Gavin and I just went through problem five. So many, uh, problem, um, the last one. Yeah. Problem five. So many of you kind of saw some of that, but we're going to go back over that. But I wanted to go through the cone first. Okay, so Ben, how's your cone? I did not understand the cone. Okay, no, did you ask? Did you ask it? Sounds great. 
No smart dudes. Um, no, it didn't. It'll be a no. Okay, so Ben, you've got to reach out. Reach out. Okay, so we're going to start doing the cone. So let's, Ben, you and I are going to work on getting the values we need, okay? And then I'll call on somebody else. Okay, okay so um, the rate that the uh, volume is being poured out is three inches per second, three cubic inches per second. So what is that gonna give me? That gives me what? DV, D, T? The what? The yeah, first thing the you, give me. you see how that's DV, DT? Yes. Yeah. Cubic type measurement and that's my tip off. Okay, so that's good. The diameter- Can you share your screen? Oh, I'm Can so sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm writing this so carefully and uh, no one's seeing it. Yeah. It was coming. And then they're going to give us information that's going to let us switch out, but we had to first work with the information they're giving us because they didn't give it to us um, directly. It says the diameter of the base of a pile is twice the height. What I would recommend that you do, Ben and everybody else, is just write diameter equals two times the height. And then say, okay, I know that in my formula, I have radius. So diameter equals what? So Ben, if I don't want to have diameter there, what can I put instead in its place? Uh, radius squared, or radius times two. Right, so I'm going to say 2R equals 2H. Then look, you can just get rid of all the twos, divide both sides by two, and that's good. And then what that does for us is the following. That lets us to do a one-to-one -one switch. Um, so we're going to keep reading now. It says find the rate at which the height of the pile is increasing. So that I want the rate. So that's DHDT. Are you good with that, Ben? Yeah. That's what they're looking for. Okay. Okay. So then at the instant, the height is four. Okay. So height equals four. So over here, I have all the information that I really need. Okay. I'm going to measure this whole thing and all the actions happening when the height is four. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a couple of steps and switch out, um, well, we'll talk about that. What we're gonna switch out for is the next question. So let's go down to, um, hmm, Olivia. So what am I gonna switch for? Do I wanna have my H's or my R's in there? Um, you could make the, because, because R equals H, you could just, make it the make the equation one third pi h to the third yep okay so i'll do that in two steps so everyone else can see that okay so she realizes that they gave us the height <coughs> therefore radius has to go be comfortable in the cone problem going through a couple of these steps okay so now i'm down there everything's as clean as it can be so i'm going to go ahead and take the derivative okay so why it Take the derivative. I want the derivative with respect to time. All you have to do is the power rule on the right hand side. Go for it. Um, so for the derivative, would you do h three with the h to the third become three h? Yes. Or yeah, three h to the second. Yes. So when the and three then, comes down, it's gonna go over the other three. Oh, okay. 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 Because then okay. Nice things happen. Gotcha. Okay. And then what else do I need? I need one more thing at the very end because it's a rate of change. So I've got mm. to write DH. Oh, D DH. Okay. Okay. So that's how, how it is. Hey, Ben, does this look okay now? This is going to be your yeah. every time. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that <laughs> okay. Let's see what we're going to plug in. So DVDT is three. So that's going to be three. This has become one. This is pi. This is going to be four squared, which is 16. And I'm looking for the HGT. Okay, so what will I, I divide by here? So I'm going to come over to, um, to Victor. What do I do now? I want to get the HGT by itself. What shall I divide? 16 pi. Right, so I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to be really careful to make sure that my pi stays in the denominator and does not float up. So my DHGT is going to be 3 over 16 pi. And then I have to figure out my units. So this is going to be just the height changing. So it's going to be plain old inches per second. 
Okay. Okay, so that's a cone problem. So you you now have at least one from the pink packet, you may have two from the blue packet, and you've got this one. So there's lots of examples to look over to build confidence so that when you see it, you just kind of go into a, a nice pattern of execution, okay, without killing yourself. Okay, so I wanted to do this problem. Gavin and I started this. Why don't I erase some of this stuff because this will be confusing to go over. So instead of having you go off to breakout rooms, I think it would be more instructive to show you how I did this. The problem that you're going to have on the quiz that deals with this concept is still going to be the rocket one. Okay, so you want to do the rocket one. This one is similar to it, but for those of you that already have kind of figured out the rocket problem, this is a good little way to kind of stretch. And for those of you that are still working on the rocket problem, that's okay. You can see that you can apply that different ways. A lot of the same terminology is going to result. We're just going to do a different derivative. So they tell us that the ladder is 40 feet tall. So that's a constant. It's right there. The bottom of the ladder is sliding away from the building horizontally. So it's going away. So therefore, the bottom is growing. So dx dt equals um, 6 feet per second. Find the rate at which the angle between the top of the ladder and the wall, so they want this angle. It's this top angle. Remember for the rocket problem, we were using this angle. So when you use the rocket problem, you'll still use that bottom toe angle. But for right now, we're doing this top one. Okay, so it says find the rate at which the angle um, between the top of the ladder and the wall is changing when that angle is 30 degrees. Okay, it's not always 30 degrees, but when I'm going to be checking it, I've got to figure out um, what all the values are going to be at 30 degrees. So I just, whoops, I want to do that. I just wrote in 30 degrees up here instead because I want to figure out what my other values are. Now, I didn't do a lot of math. What I did was I used special triangles. Remember the 30 60 triangles that were on, you know, the SATs and stuff? So what they what tells you that tells you is that you can get all your sides easily. This is the 2A side. This is your A side. So therefore, the 30 degree side is going to be half of that. So that's 20. Across from the 60 degree angle is the A root 3 side. This is the A root 3 side. And this is going to be 20 root 3. Okay, so I just gave myself all those values by just knowing special triangles. So I'm just kind of showing you what you can do with math now that you've done this kind of stuff. I'm not going to have you do special triangles on the quiz. Okay, so let me get rid of all the extraneous stuff. Okay, so at the instant everything stops, this is what's going on. So it says find the rate at which the angle between the top is changing. So to figure that out, I'm focusing my attention back up on this angle. So from this angle's perspective, what do I know? I have information about this side, and I have information about this side, and that's a constant. So from the angle's perspective, that is opposite over hypotenuse, that's going to be sine. For the, for the rocket problem, it's gonna, you're going to do tangent. So this is sine of some theta, because the theta is not always 60, or it's not always 30, equals um, opposite, which is going to be changing, right? So opposite is going to be x over hypotenuse, which is never, ever changing. So that's why I can say that is my formula. So remember in the rocket problem, we had to use the information they gave us as well. And what wasn't changing in the rocket problem was the x, because the distance from the launch um, site to the audience um, was, I just had, had a question, I think about that. So the distance from the rocket site to the, to the audience was constant. So for these problems, you should be looking for a constant because that's going to make it easier. Okay, so then we're just going to take our derivative. This is going to be cosine theta d theta dt 
equals 1 over 40, and then it's going to be dx dt. Okay, my goal is to get uh, d beta dt by itself. Here's t d beta dt. It's 1 over 40 dx dt. Then I divided by cosine in order to get rid of it. So that's like multiplying by 1 over cosine. Okay, so that's what I have in here. Okay, so then what, do I, what else do I, can I do? I know at that instant, the angle is 30 degrees. What is the cosine of 30 degrees? Well, 30 degrees is pi over six. And down here, the pi over six has two values, right? The one half and the root three over two, the root three over two is the cosine value. So wherever I have, values I can plug in. I'm going to do that now. This is six. Um, this is one over cosine. So cosine is root three over two. One over cosine is two over root three. And then all we're going to do is cancel some of these numbers out. And um, I can make that was that. That's good. And then this can be three and this can be 10. So I end up getting three 10 root three, and it's gonna be radians per second. And that is my d beta dt. Okay, so that was just a variation. So if you <laughs> kind of understood the rocket problem, kind of play with this, it will expand your mind and make you more confident doing the rocket problem. If you barely, barely held on during the rocket problem, don't look at this again at this point as you get ready for the quiz. Go back and look at number 11. The video is posted of me doing it. Uh, we did it in class. You should have the notes for it unless you're a Katie. In that case, she, she also has the video. If you're getting stuck on something, let me know. Okay, if you want to do the rocket problem again right now, I can do that as well. So it's up to you. The session is, is for you to get fine-tuned so that you can do well on this upcoming assessment. So where are we? What do you think? Dr. Ryder, could you scroll to number four real quick? Yep. I think I did something wrong. Okay. Hopefully you, not me. Did you keep your pie in the denominator? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. 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 Anybody else need to see anything on this? packet before I stop sharing the screen. Okay, so let me go back for a sec. And let's just look over here. Okay, I don't want to go there. I want to go to the blue. Just give me this one. Okay, so just look at this rocket problem. That's not that is done. Okay, so the whole thing with the rocket problem, look where the angle is. That's where the angle will be for your quiz. It will be a tan. You'll have a constant base to work with. So that will be your denominator. And you'll take the derivative. And then you're going to have to um, switch things over to cosine, figure out the cosine of the angle, or, and work it from there. OK, and then you're going to square it. So that's how that all works. So there's that problem worked out. So you kind of know what you have to work on. I think for most of you, what you want to work on is the cone problem and this uh, trig problem and possibly the area problem for the ladder and perhaps the ladder itself. The other problems, um, the cube and all, should be uh, kind of gimmies. Just as long as you follow along, there's not going to be anything that's going to be out of line. Uh, but you do want to watch the terminology. So if it says that something is melting, it's negative. If it says that you know a sphere is um, filling, it's positive. If your cone is leaking, it's negative. So those kind of things you want to be on the lookout for. So I'm not going to give you like all well, everything um, in with numbers and signs. Okay, you're responsible for the signs. I'll work for the numbers. Um, when you do the uh, situation with switching out for the the cone, you've got to set up the relationship. I'll give it to you in wording, and then you need to apply it to the situation that you're faced with, okay? Okay, so anything else for the good of the cause? 
Okay. Oh, uh, Doctor Ray. Yep. Oh, I just got. I was got tripped up again. If you don't mind, can you go back to five on the other packet? Uh huh. Yep. So here's five. Yeah, you, you keep moving those angles around, Gavin. Yeah. So you keep you you took um the original as sine uh, theta equals x over forty because you knew you needed to find dx dt, right? That's why you put the x in there. Well, I knew that they. But that's why you set up that. Way. I had to figure out. Um, they gave me dx dt. They gave me x. But the reason why I couldn't use um, the cosine is that they did not give me the dy dt, and I know it's changing. <clears throat> So all I have is a y value and no dy dt. So that's why I can't uh, do that. Oh, uh, okay. So, but I'm going, I want to look okay, at my constant sense. too. You know, my constant is what, is what it's all about because that makes my life so much easier. So for your rocket, the constant is, a, is the x value. For the latter, the constant is the hypotenuse value. Okay. Okay, so for these trig problems, you want, you want to absolutely have your constant there because you're not going to be doing a uh, quotient rule. Okay, this is not the time of valor and trying to figure out quotient rule when you don't have sufficient information to use it because you don't have, in this case, dy dt. Okay, so that's, that's my thought on, on that one. So what I would tell you to do is practice. Practice and like talk out loud to yourself about what you're doing. Working with others is good. That's, you know, I, I always encourage that because if you can explain it to somebody else or even talk it through with somebody else, you, your brain is processing that very differently and it, it makes for uh, better um, pathways in your brain that you can hop on again. It's like making highways as opposed to back dirt roads. So it's very good to be able to share and talk and explain to one another. And that's why I try to encourage that by the breakout rooms. Because if you were all in class, that I always teach like that. I teach and then everyone goes in groups and then we switch around the groups and it's the way to learn. So when you get to college, whenever you can make an opportunity to have a study group, I would highly recommend it because it makes all the difference in the world. Okay, so if there's nothing else, I can stop recording this and I will then post it in a little bit. I'll post it on today's class. So finish this for homework if you haven't finished it already because I can give you another homework grade um, for this. So post it on today's date and I will put today's video on today's date in a little bit when, when, it up, when it uploads for me. Okay? All right, so next class, when you come in, kind of ready to think, think about how you're moving your camera so that I can see what you're working on. And because um, if your, your test is gonna be <coughs> on Monday, if you're in person, that's a no brainer. We can figure that out pretty easily. If you're, you're at home, that's when you want to be able to know how you're setting it up so that I can see your desktop and what you're working on. Okay, you can have a calculator, you can have paper, um, you can't have you know, references, you can't have the prior packets we've worked on. You can't uh, you know, check your notes as you go. Okay, so that's, that's where we are. So I can let you go and uh, work on this. Just be in contact. Um, I should be here over the weekend. Even if I'm not, I can always access my email. So if you need me for something, don't hesitate to reach out, okay? So I will let you go, have a good day, and then I'll post this video in a little while. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome, bye guys. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Riley. Yeah. One other thing before I go, do you happen to get, I actually put out my email, so I'm not sure if you actually saw it or if I did it or not. Uh, you know, do something about a, um, like a, uh, for like my the postgrad I have to go to. I I did one. Was there a second one? Did you resend it? Oh, I, I guess they didn't send it, or they didn't get it. Do you think you could resend it? So I filled it out for them online. So which was it? Just one school, and what was it? I can look it up in my email right now. Fourth. Yeah, it was just Fourth Union. It's just one school. What did I fill out for you? I filled out something else. What they sent me pictures. I think there was only, I mean, there was only one thing, for, unless IMG, IMG. Oh, okay. I might have been for uh, one for IMG because I was going to go that's, there or. That's what I did. Okay, yeah, I just found the fourth union. It must have got caught in all my emails over Easter. So I have it now. Uh, okay. 
So I can. I okay, can, sorry about that. I know it's a lot of work. That's okay, because I because I had done one and then it was off, off my radar after that. But yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. To well, okay. Is, Thank you so much. You're welcome. So I'll take care of this right now. All right. Bye bye. And then I'll take that. And then the the quiz you said you're okay with me just taking it on my iPad in my bed. Yeah. Well, if, we'll if I have. I'll give you another version of it. Okay. Um. So just let me know when you want to do that. You want to do it okay. class or whether you want to do it, you know, at another time. Just look, you know, talk with your mom, figure out your medication schedule, figure out your PT stuff and all that stuff, and go for the best time. Okay, even if it's not during. Okay. The okay Perfect. So awesome. Thank you for being so flexible. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, this will this will this will pass, but you need to take care of this um, and do it well. So yeah, we can, I can work with you. Okay. So All right. Have a good day. Yeah, you too, honey. Bye bye.